Okay, um, this will be a short video, or a couple or a few short videos, on uh, using the Shadowrun Returns editor. There are other tutorials out there, but this one is mine. Um, and if you load the editor for the first time from the Dragon 4 or the Hong Kong um, content menu in the main menu, you should get a scene, I guess, roughly like this. Um, and I think we're just going to dive in. I'd aim at the end of 10 or 15 minutes that you have something playable so let's not waste any time and I'll explain things as we go so you should get this um, little pop-up to remind you that there are these wikis and other websites that help you find information and there are wikis out there still some of these links are broken but there's good information online so you know go search for things get rid of that so if we've just started it for the first time we probably first thing we need to do is create a content pack we go to the top left file new content pack and it will say new content pack wizard and we just need to give it a name I'm going to call it tutorial 1 yeah and I won't give it an author name or a description you can feel free to do that and I'm going to leave this checkbox here unchecked because we will be making a mission or a campaign rather than just an asset pack we click next and we here get to choose our dependencies now the Hong Kong editor contains all of the assets from Dragonfall um, and I'm using the Hong Kong editor so I'm just gonna go Hong Kong and I'm then gonna go HK Coder which is I think the expansion pack assets um, if you have Dragonfall for example and you're using that editor you may need to choose something slightly different here but you know it should be fairly obvious we click next and get a summary and then when I click finish one of two things will happen either the editor will crash or it will um, initialize our new content pack. It will probably crash. Oh my god, it didn't crash. Okay, we're off to a good start. It does crash fair, fairly often, so just get in the habit of saving. Um, so we're in the, the sort of the main screen here. Right in the center we have a gray canvas. This is where we're going to build out the physical terrain of our level. And we're going to use do that by using assets from the asset library up here in the top left. Um, in the left center we have story data. This will contain all of our scenes and conversations for our entire content pack, as well as quest items and things like that. If this can get quite clustered quite quickly. In the lower left we have the scene data, triggers, variables, events, goals, and so on top right we have a list of any particular assets we're using in the scene and then center right we have the properties for any selected piece of content um, and we won't really touch on those in this video that much um, in the top of this screen on this top bar we have some filters here for filtering things in and out as we are working we have filter well we can filter in and out the different floor layers the wall layers objects characters, regions, patrol routes, lights, um, I can't remember what that one is, there you go, invisible props layer, and then we have, um, that's cover for example, <clears throat> but again we won't use that much on this on this first video. So my aim I think is just to get you in the game as quickly as possible, um, and then we can worry about fleshing things out later. So up here in the asset library we need to find some floors, we need to find something to walk around on. So I'm going to go up to where it says all in this drop down menu. Why is that so small? I don't know why that's so small. Um, and I'm going to come down to where it says tenements. It's going to be that one. And this will filter out everything except the assets in the tenement pack. And I just want basically some walls and some floors so that we can run around. Um, so let's find some floor first. Floor. Something basic. That'll do. Some tile floor. Um, and I'm just going to, I literally just grab it with the left mouse and drag it in and drop it. And parts will snap together. They're all on a grid system. Um, and then I'm going to copy and paste a few times. And that should be enough, I would think. Well, you can never be too careful. There we go. Nice big room. That's way too big, actually. Um, and let's get some walls. Um, 
And again, you should feel free to use any asset pack you want as long as it's got walls and floors in it and just screw around. Um, but I'm going to look for the puce set because I know it has everything I want. Um, and I'm just going to drag in some wall pieces. Um, hmm. Yeah. Um, let's talk about corners. Well, first let's talk about rotation. If you want to rotate a bit of wall, you just select it and press the R key. Um, now the pew set does have a corner built into it. Some sets do. There's a corner piece. Most sets do not come with corners pre-built. And in fact, you can't even rotate this corner. So it's completely useless for what we're building right now. So corners in Shadowrun are built out of two pieces. And you'll find this is consistent across every asset pack. Um, there's a connector. There's one there. And then there is an end, which is there. And these two pieces fit together or snap together in combination in different rotations in order to make a corners. And what I'm doing is it's not really necessary for a level this size, but I'm prefabricating my corners in some part of the level where nobody will ever go. Um, like so. And I recommend you do the same. If you're going to be using one content pack quite a lot, it's going to save you a lot of time to do this out in some out of the way corner. And then you can just copy and paste them every time you need them rather than fiddling around with them. Um, and we're going to want some more pieces of wall here. We're going to want a door eventually, so why don't we do that now? Um, we're gonna, I'll save later. He says, tempting fate. Um, so doors are composed of three parts, back, front, and a middle. These are just the doors in the tenement set. Um, there are huge numbers of doors of every conceivable style. Um, and again, they just snap together um, in matching parts. We'll pop him down there and him down there. And this middle piece, this won't do anything just as it is. It's going to be as solid as a piece of wall. It won't be openable. We won't be able to do anything with it, but we're just going to drop it in there. And I'm just going to finish blocking out this part of this map. And we're pretty much there. The only piece of geometry or terrain we haven't covered yet is black wall fill. These lower walls here in Shadowrun are not seen by the camera. And we can leave it just like this. Um, anything black just sort of melds into the background and it doesn't look too bad. Um, but the floor will look like garbage if we leave it just like that. So what we want to do is, for the sake of decency, is screen off this bottom edge of the room with a black wall fill. We come up here to the search string, black wall fill, and then go from tenement to all, get black wall fill. I'm actually going to make sure I cover up um, All of the floor because we don't want it overhanging because it looks bad and we're just gonna cover up those edges we've got some gaps here and I'm literally just gonna overlap my walls to make sure that space is screened off now I'm gonna save it file save scene as and I'm gonna call my scene C01 for chapter 01 space hyphen space scene 01 space hyphen space first map. And I use this naming convention throughout um, for my scenes, um, for my conversations, for my quest objects and so on, because eventually you'll start to find that a lot of the, app, the content you create is automatically sorted into various drop down menus and context menus within um, this editor. And if you use this convention of space hyphen space between every um, component of the name, these will automatically be passed into a, a hierarchical system of subfolders and so on. It saves a lot of space and makes things a lot easier to find later on. So I recommend doing something like this, but you don't have to. Now I'm going to click OK. It's going to have a think. It might crash. Hey, it didn't crash. And now this scene appears over here in story data. <clears throat> all of our scenes will be here um, as we create more and link them together into a campaign. They will all start to appear. 
So we've got walls, we've got floor, we've got a door that doesn't work. What else do we need? We need a player. So I'm going to get rid of my black wall fill, search string, which will then load all the assets back into the library. And on this very top of the list, well, on the very first screen of the list anyway, you'll find player spawner. You just drag him into the world like that. And that's all we need to do. That's a functioning player character. There's only one thing missing now, and that's a camera. Cameras do not by default exist in Shadowrun. You have to create spaces for them. Um, if we loaded up the game now, it would basically load, but we wouldn't be able to see anything or do anything. So we need to define a region in which the camera can move. And we're going to come up here to scene contents, where it says regions. We're going to right click, create region. And then this little purple widget will be created. And if we grab him by his wedge, we can drag him around and put him roughly where we want. And there will be fine for the purpose of this. Actually, let's filter out the walls by clicking up here in the top bar um, and put him right on the corner of the uh, floor. <clears throat> so that's by clicking on his wedge, we can drag him around. By clicking on his gear, we can drag him out and define an arbitrary piece of, of space. <clears throat> and this is just a basic normal region. And what we can do is then give it a name, region 1, over here in the properties window, region name, region 1. <clears throat> and then we could have a trigger that would say over here on the left, we could have a trigger that said when an actor enters this region of space bounded by region 1, then something happens. Um, and you use this an awful lot in the game, it's how a lot of content is, is put together. But um, right now we don't want him to act like a normal region, we want him to act like a camera. And so under region type, in properties where it says normal we're going to change to camera and now what this bounding box does is define an area in which a camera can move and you need this I mean it's absolutely necessary and as the map increases we'll have this one region probably encompassing the whole box the whole map um, but for now it's you know it's fine it's not very important so I'm going to save once more. I'm going to filter back in the walls and save once more should we go straight and test in the map? Well, let's let's get this door working first, and then we'll go and test the map. So right now, this this door is basically a wall. It's impassable. It does nothing. Let's drag it out into some open space so we can see what we're doing. And then in the properties, while having the door selected over here, there's a little hammer right on the right hand side of the screen. We click that, and it brings up an interaction editor. And right now, this door's interaction type is none. It's not interactable. We click the drop down menu here. We want to change none to door. The door will be enabled at map start. Its interaction distance will be 1, which is default. We can give it some rollover text. This is our first door. And we could define some prerequisites for interaction, like maybe it would need um, a certain item. <clears throat> or perhaps uh, the goal a certain mission had been completed um, or anything else uh, but we won't do that now so we'll get rid of that we're going to leave the initial door state as closed we're going to allow players to use it by not making it AI only and the door sound we could choose anything in this list we want and this is all the sounds in the game so we could make a cow moo or a car horn or something like that but if we leave it on nothing literally nothing the default sound will be applied to this door and that's going to be absolutely fine and we know we've got this an interaction applied to this door now because this little exclamation point has appeared above it um, and so that's just a rough visual guide it's, it's not telling you anything is wrong and you can apply these interactions to literally anything this piece of wall for example could have a, an interaction of any kind um, and we use that a lot through the game as well anyway for now I'm going to drag this door back and save once more and then up here in the top center ish there's this green box with an arrow in it that says test scene I'm going to click it and that will bring up our uh, scene scratch pad and the only thing we need to worry about in here is down the bottom here main character override this the options here will define how this blue player spawner acts in the world so will it a load in a main character from an existing save game that we have? We could hire a main character from you know, the higher menu just as if we were playing the game as normal. Or we could define a specific character model and skill set. For the purpose of this, I'm just going to choose hire main character. 
and it will then suggest an amount of money that the player will be given. Um, if you're making a particular uh, mission pack, you'll probably want to have either a new character, and I'll talk about that later, um, or a load character, that is, the pl let the player import their own character from elsewhere. Um, but for now, I'm just going to use a higher character. And up here in the top right, I'm going to click test this scene once more. The game will have a little think about what it's doing. And then, with any luck, if we tap back over to Hong Kong, which has been open all this time in the background. Okay. That happens sometimes. It's We've clicked test. We tried to load in the assets, and it hasn't worked. That's fine. We just do it once more, and it will work. Um, and then when we tap back into Hong Kong this time, it should be loading up the scene. There we go. So this is the basic, um, the default loading image, the default loading text, and there's no description. We can change all that. It's not very complicated. Click continue, and we've got the higher screen as we suspected we would. We've got 10,000 new yen, but well, I'm, there's nothing going on in this map, so who cares? Click continue. It will think for a second, and here we are in game. So I think that must have taken 10, maybe 15 minutes. Um, and we can run around. We've got a camera which is decently bounded by the camera region that we assigned. Um, the sounds are all automatically generated. Well, for the character running around, they are. Um, environmental sounds and music and so on, we'll talk about later. And if we go over to this door, the rollover text appears. This is our door. We click on it, and the door opens. But you know, there's nowhere to go. We can't. We can't walk into the void. Um, so that's the real basics, and I'm going to cut this video here probably, and I'll make another one fairly shortly. I'm going to have some breakfast. Um, and in the next one, maybe we'll put in some NPCs, somebody to talk to, somebody to follow us around, and maybe somebody to have a fight with. But before we do that, um, I'm going to, off, off camera, I'm going to build out maybe a corridor going off in one direction, and then another room at the end of it. And you might want to do the same if you're going to follow along. Um, I would, you know, I would advise you don't disappear down the rabbit hole of trying to make everything look beautiful and really cool and interesting if you're just learning the editor for the first time because it's very easy to do that and it's probably the best thing is just to get the systems in place working no matter how ugly they are now. Um, so yeah, anyway, I will be back shortly with another video.